Hello, this is Professor Jim Chen at Cal State Long Beach. This problem illustrates the use of Lagrange multipliers to solve an optimization problem in three variables. As always, we start with the picture. There are three different pricings on this box. I'm going to use a different color for each. For the top or the roof, I'm going to use a red, and that is $1 per square foot. For the two sides and the back, that is going to be green and that's two dollars per square foot. For the front, it's going to, going to be in aqua and that is five dollars per square foot. Um, before we do the next thing, we go back to the question one more time to read what are the variables we're looking for here? And The question is asking for the dimensions to minimize the total cost. So go back to the question and label the variables in the picture. And that's going to be the length x times the width, y, and the height, z. And once the picture is drawn, the next thing we need to do is to write an objective function. And in this case, it's going to be a cost function. And the total cost to build this box is going to be the cost to build the three sites plus the cost to build the roof and also the cost to build the front. So we have those information written down here. And first of all to figure out the cost of the front, well we're going to take the dollar amount per square footage times the total area for that. So in this case it's going to be five dollars per square foot times the area of x and z. Similarly we have the cost for the three sites and that's going to be two dollars per square foot times the area. Well the area of the three sites consists of the area of the two sites plus the area of the back. The area of the two sites are both the same and that is y and z. Um, the area at the back is going to be x times z. And then we have the cost of the roof. It's going to be the cost which is one dollar per square foot times the area of the roof and that is x times y. Now once this equation is set up we just have to simplify a little bit combining like terms to reach 7xz plus 4yz plus xy. And the next equation we need to do is to, to write the constraint function. So we go back to the question one more time and try to figure out which piece of information represents the constraints. It, the problem says the volume cost it needs to be 756 square feet. Well that is equal to a number so that's where the constraint is. So I'm going to write an expression that represents the volume of this box. Well that's pretty straightforward. That's just length times width times height. So we get XYZ is equal to 756. Um, so now the method of Lagrange multiplier actually starts. One little detail is that we're familiar with using Lagrange multipliers in two variables so far. Now we're going to add one more variable to it. So we have to modify our um, equations just a tiny little bit by adding one equation for the z variable. So in particular, we're going to start with the first equation. That's going to be f sub x equals lambda times g sub x. So we're going to go find the partial derivative of function f with respect to x. Set that equal to lambda times the partial derivative of the function g with respect to x. By doing that, we get the equation 7z plus y equals lambda times y times z. Similarly, we have uh, equation f sub y equals lambda times g sub y, and that, by doing the calculation, we get 4z plus x equals lambda xz. Now this is where it's different. We have one equation for the z variable, f sub z equals lambda times g sub z. The computation gives then 7x plus 4y equals lambda times xy. And as before, the next step in this process is to solve 
the variable lambda in each equation. So first equation we get the 7z plus y on the left hand side divided by the yz on the right hand side to get the lambda. We're going to label that equation 1. For the second equation we get lambda equals 4z plus x divided by xz. Label that equation 2. Similarly we have another equation from the third. Label that equation 3. And typically in Lagrange multiplier in two variables, we will set the two equations of lambdas equal to each other. But then there's only one way to do that. But now if you have three equations, and setting two equations equal to each other at a time, there are actually three different ways of doing that. We don't actually need to do all three. Um, by doing two, it will be sufficient to give us enough information to proceed. So we're going to set equation one and two equal to each other first, and see what we get. Um, by letting equation 1 equal to equation 2, um, we do this cross multiplication method. So the top of equation 1, 7z plus y, would then be multiplied to the bottom of equation 2, which is xz. That would then be equal to the top of the equation 2 times the bottom of equation 1. We simplify by distributing we will get to this equation. Now notice you don't want to cancel anything. In instead, um, well actually you do want to cancel terms that are exactly the same. In this case is x, y, z. But then you want to factor out the common terms from the leftovers. And in this case z squared is the left is the common um, between those two terms. I'm going to move the 4y z squared to the left and set that equation equal to 0 and then factor out the z squared. So then we have z squared in the front and 7x minus the 4y and all equal to 0. And now it's we're using the zero, the pro, zero product property to set each of those two factors equal to 0. We get z squared equal to 0 which means z is equal to 0 or 4x is equal to uh, uh, sorry 7x is equal to 4y. Notice that z cannot be equal to 0 because in this case represents the height of a box. You cannot have a flat box here. So we're left with the equation 7x plus 4y. We're going to leave that equation for now and come back to it later. Now we'll look at the second um, equation where we're going to set the equation 2 and equation 3 equal to each other. Notice that you can do equation 1 equal to equation 3 instead. Like I said, it really makes little difference. We're just going to do 2 to 3 here. Um, I'm going to use a strategy a little bit different from the one before. Instead of just doing this cross multiplication, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom of equation 2 by the variable y. And by doing that, I get 4yz plus xy on top. And that will be over xyz, which I'm not writing here. Um, same thing if I were to multiply the equation 3 by a variable z, top and the bottom, I would get on top 4xz, I mean, sorry, 7xz plus 4yz. And that would then be all over x, y, z as well. And notice that the denominators from those two expressions are exactly the same, namely x, y, z. That's why I'm not writing it, because they're exactly the same. So we come out with this equation. We can also cancel out the, the common terms for y, z in this case. Move the 7, x, z to the left-hand side and factor out the variable x. Gives us x times quantity x, y minus 7z, all equal to 0. Again, using the zero product property, we're going to set x equal to 0, or it's y minus 7z equals 0. In this case, y is equal to 7z. Just like before, we can't have a 0 width in a box. So we're left with the equation set, uh, y equals 7z. So far, we've got these two equations to tell us the relationship between the variables x, y, and z. Notice that this gives us enough information altogether because if 7x is equal to 4y, that means x 
is equal to 4 divided by 7 times y. But then you look at the second equation, which says y is equal to 7z, allows us to write the variable x completely in terms of z as well. So we get this third relationship, which says 4z is equal to x. These three equations gives us a completely enough information to now be plugged into the constraint equation g. Because so far we haven't really used the constraint, right? Um, but because constraint is a way to relate the three variables together, which then is equal to a constant, by plugging in these relationship into the constraint, we can solve those variables completely. So now I'll go back to the constraint. And those three relationships gives exactly the following. G is equal to x times y times z. However, x is 4z from before. And y is 7z. And z is just z. So by doing that, I get 28z cubed. But then remember, that's all equal to a number, 756. So I can divide it by 28 both sides. I get z cubed is equal to 27. And to isolate the variable z, I take cube root of both sides. And that gives precisely z equals 3. That has resolved the variable z completely. And now we have relationship between x and the y and the z. So I'll go back to that and plug in the equation x equals 4z to give us 12 for the x. And then the equation y is equal to 7z gives us uh, y is equal to 21. And remember that you always have to answer the question. Now you've solved x, y, z completely, but then what does the question ask? So the question is asking for the dimensions, which are exactly what x, y, z mean. So go back to your box and then fill in the blanks. The dimensions are precisely 12 feet by 21 feet by 3 feet. This concludes this question.